Hey again everyone, I'm back with another video for you and today we're going to continue in our be beginner crochet class. This is lesson number four and we're going to be learning half double crochet. Uh, before we get started, I want to check your progress on um, your single crochet project. Did you finish it? Did you have any trouble? If you did, just let me know in the, the comments and I'll see if I can if I can help you at all. Keep practicing. It only gets easier. Seriously, it does. It only gets easier and more fun because now you're going to start learning a stitch today that's really going to um, move your crocheting along. You're going to get faster. But before we get started on actually teaching the stitch, I want to go over the kind of yarn and the hook that we're going to be using today. Oh, and we're going to be making a dishcloth. Yay, a dishcloth. That sounds fun, Jess. Yay. No, seriously, it really... If you've ever used a crocheted dishcloth, you know what I mean. I'm talking about one that you get in there and really scrub your pots and pans with. It is amazing. And they are really inexpensive to make. And they're quick to make. They're fun. And they're pretty. They're useful. They are made out of cotton. So they can, they wear really well. You can throw them in the wash and I mean you'll find yourself making a lot of these and they make great gifts too uh, especially for grandmas <laughs> we always love little things like that especially if they're made by our daughters or granddaughters or our sons and grandsons but I don't have a little grandson I have a little granddaughter but I don't have a little grandson yet so uh, I'm going to switch around the camera and show you what we're going to be using today. Okay, I think you're going to be able to see this uh, pretty well. I've been doing some sewing and I have all my stuff everywhere, sorry. Yarn we're going to be using today is a brand called Peaches and Cream and it is a cotton yarn. It Last week we, or last lesson we used a mercerized cotton remember that was the one that had the uh, the treatment on the yarn to make it a little bit stronger and um, pearl pearlescent this one does not have any kind of treatment on it this is just plain cotton and this particular brand is sold in these little um, two and a half ounce content, uh, balls and also these cones and I'll talk to you about that in a moment but this is a worsted yarn so we're back up to a larger hook however if you look at the label on this particular yarn it recommends an H hook instead of an I an H8 instead of an I9 so I have my H hook here. I'm still using the inline style to show you. This is good. The thing that you have to be careful about with cotton is you have to make sure that you store it in a place where your husband doesn't get a hold of it when he runs out of garden twine and use it in the garden to tie up tomato plants um, yeah well so okay so cotton is a good substitute for that it's a natural fiber it's very strong it's not as strong as the mercerized you see I can rip that uh, I can tear pull that and tear it uh, with not a lot of pressure but um, it it is strong enough to use for something like that and it worked really well tying up the tomatoes and because it's a natural fiber it doesn't cut into the the plants like some other things do um, and if by chance you share your yarn with him and say okay honey you can tie up the tomato plants with 
with the, the yarn. Um, just make sure that he doesn't leave it outside in the dirt in a thunderstorm for the whole weekend. Yeah, I wouldn't know anything about that. Um, so, my cone here doesn't look as good as some of the cones that you will find at the stores. But they do come in big 14-ounce uh, cones like this. And these are... So, what we're going to be using today, though, is this small 2.5-ounce ball. And I've started to do a couple of swatches and here's here's my uh, uh, here is a serious problem with um, not not like life and death problem, but more serious than you know like tying up tomato plants. Um, here's a problem with uh, this particular yarn. I have a really hard time, and I've, I've searched online about this as well. I'm not the only one. I have a really hard time finding the center pull in these balls of yarn so I either end up having a big mess on my hands because I dig around and uh, this yarn splits very easily or you have to pull out the whole guts of the yarn and then keep track of everything and make sure it doesn't get tangled and so that's that's not a, a good alternative either so I'm going to teach you today how to roll this into a ball of yarn. They're going to teach you how to, two ways. The first is just rolling it into a ball that you can use then from the outside. Then I'm going to teach you how to make a center pull ball. Now regular ball and it's very very simple. You just take the yarn. I like to use three fingers to start. You do not want to, so you want to use three fingers to start with so that it can stay loose on the inside. Okay, and then you're just going to wind it around your fingers three or four, ten times, I don't know, just until you have a good amount on there. And then you're going to slide it off and flatten out the circle and hold it horizontally. Then you're going to start wrapping from this direction. and just kind of make it 10, 20 times. Then when you get it to looking about like a peanut, you're going to take the two ends and fold them together like this. Get in there, that little tail. Fold them together like this and wind around the, the little ball that's sticking out from there. Wind it around a few times and then turn it and you'll catch the little top part that you folded over. And you just continue to wind until you are out of yarn. Sometimes you'll get tired and you'll need to switch. Ah! And sometimes you'll drop it. <laughs> you'll need to switch hands. Sometimes it'll bunch up like this and fall off like that. So you kind of have to really go slowly and it helps when they're small like this if you vary where you're um, placing the yarn on the ball just until it gets large enough where um, it will stay together pretty well. You don't want it to fall apart at this time. So you can see it looks pretty tight but it's still really squishy and loose. You can tell that it's soft in there. That's what you want. You do not want it to be so hard that you can't squeeze it because then you run the risk of um, damaging your yarn. And you just keep going. You might want to do something like this when you're watching TV or you just kind of have to keep that contained. Let me unwind this. And I'm going to teach you how to make a center pull ball. And then I'm going to get off camera and complete the center pull ball and 
teach you the stitch. So let me get this all unwound. And it's not wanting to cooperate with me. So there we go. Okay. Now, this is really tricky. You're going to have to watch. It's really not tricky. It's basically the same ball that I just showed you. The only difference is you leave the tail a lot longer and you leave it sticking out. So you leave the tail down about six inches and you pull up here. You start up this high with your three fingers and you wrap around and you're going to leave your tail out. Leave your tail sticking out and you're going to wind it the same way. Okay, then once you get a good mass, you just pull it off and start the second round the same way as before. Make your little peanut and then fold this over and here's our tail still sticking out and you're going to leave the tail out. Okay. Leave. Keep it sir. Takes a little to get it started, but you pull here and we'll start crocheting from here. I'll show you that in just a few minutes and um, I'm going to stop the video now and go ahead and finish this ball and I'll be back right back. Okay, um, another thing really quickly. I, I said I was using the peaches and cream. There's also another brand called Sugar and Cream, I think it's, it's by Lily's um, Sugar and Cream. And it's a really good 100% um, cotton yarn also. They uh, sold in sizes like this. They are really inexpensive. I got this at Walmart for a dollar and a half. And the Sugar and Cream is a very comparable price. You might find this in the craft stores labeled as kitchen cotton. So when you see kitchen cotton, this is the kind of yarn they're talking about. Really quickly, I wanted to tell you that um, the stitch that we're going to be learning today is one of my favorite stitches. It's very versatile. It has a weird name. It's called a half double crochet. You're going to say to me, Jess, why don't they just call it the double crochet? You'll find out when we work on the double crochet, which is the next video in this series. But uh, just trust me for now, it will make sense. This is called the half double crochet. And as I said earlier, you kind of have to pull a little bit to get that started. And I use this stitch a lot when I'm making afghans and scarves. In fact, I'm making an afghan right now for um, one of my kids and I'm using the combination stitches of um, half double crochet and single crochet. We're also going to revisit single crochet with this project because I'm doing it really loosely. You want to make sure you can continue to pull on your your center pull. You don't want it so tight that you can't pull it or you will break your yarn. Trust me. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> um, I know it because I've done it many, many, many times. Um, the biggest thing about making a center pull ball is continue to do this. Every time it gets a little bit bigger, pull on it a little bit more. Make sure that you can still pull the center because if it gets tight enough in there and you can't pull it, guess what? You'll break your yarn right there and then you'll have to redo it. So I'll be right back. One more thing about winding this ball that I did want to show you really quickly. As it gets larger, it's going to look, it's going to look awful. It's because I've got loops hanging out here and that's fine. In fact, I'd rather it be like that because that means it's a little bit looser. You, one of the things that I do as it gets bigger and you have a tendency to want to make it neater and have everything 
caught underneath all the and make it nice and pretty it doesn't matter what you want to make sure of is it stays loose so sometimes I will even add my finger here to the top and wind over it for a few uh, rounds oops I don't want to do that wind over my finger for a few rounds and that will ensure that it stays loose so I just wanted to give you that little tidbit okay I have my center center pull ball here is the center pull here is the end somewhere around here hmm, right here <laughs> I was pulling the other end uh, the end is right here so I'm gonna set that over here and it's you see how easily it's pulling out that's what you want so I'm gonna find the end of my yarn and start it just the way you do every other project with a slip knot I'm gonna teach I'm gonna go ahead and clip this um, and see how frayed that is I, I don't want that at the end of my project so I'm going to just clip that with cotton it does fray easier than acrylic yarn or the mercerized cotton that we used last time so I always start with a longer tail because you want to be able to weave this in at the end of your project and sometimes uh, if you're really kind of rough on the yarn it won't be as neat as that so you want it to stay neat or be able to trim some off so I always start with a longer tail and you're going to make your slip knot just as always okay now this class lesson four is going to be a little bit different than the other lessons you're already pretty comfortable with single crochet uh, with chaining and single crochet so I'm going to start you out on your project isn't that cool you're going to practice on your project this yarn is so inexpensive if you need to go get two or three balls because you use it so much that it starts to fray go do it it's a fun yarn to work with it feels nice in your hands I think you're gonna like it and this is a really easy stitch so you may not make too many mistakes okay so here we go with the first part of our project we're gonna chain 25 I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera and I'll meet you back here when we have 25 chained. Okay, so I've chained my 25, and just like we've done in some of the other videos, we are going to start working into our chain. Now, you'll recall from our single crochet that we went into the second chain from the loop, we had our chain here on the loop the first chain and we worked into the second chain this one is a little bit different we're still going to work into this foundation chain but the first thing that we're going to do is yarn over how weird is that we're going to yarn over before you do anything else so yarn over then you're going to work in the third chain from the loop. Here's your loop. One, two, three. This chain right here, you're going to insert your hook into that third chain. Like that but I split the yarn, so I'm going to try it again. <laughs> there we go. And I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Then I have three loops on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over again. And this is very similar to the decrease that we did. 
we're going to pull the chain the, the hook through all three loops on the hook and that is number one your turning chain one two because we chained 25 so then we went in we worked into the third chain so those first two chains we have the one on the loop then we skipped the first one skipped the second one and then worked into the third one those two that we skipped count as the turning chain and because with half double crochet you want to get this the hook to the same height as your stitch and that requires two chains you'll see that at the end of this row but I just wanted to, to explain how it works at the very beginning we skipped those two chains and worked into the third chain because then this becomes our first turning chain so we're going to do this stitch again going to yarn over now we're working into the next chain after that stitch and it's so hard not to split the yarn because I can't see what I'm doing through the camera there we go and then yarn over pull through and you have three loops on the chain on the hook and then yarn over again and then pull through all three loops at the same time and you have a half double your second half double crochet all right so one more time yarn over and see how the chain is wanting to, to twist as I let go of it that's one thing you have to be careful about when you're working into your chain make sure it stays straight so we're going to go to the next chain which is right here and as I've said before the hardest part in crochet is getting through your foundation chain there we go <laughs> yarn over pull through yarn over pull through okay let's keep going yarn over insert your hook into the chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through hook yarn over insert your hook now see that one went in really well yarn over pull through yarn over pull through you get that in your head you got it okay let's just keep going actually I'm going to um, fast forward through the video now to get to the end so we can do our turning chain on making progress so we've made it to the end of our row our first row and incidentally just a little bit of uh, vocabulary here the foundation chain that you do at the very beginning never counts as a row so you'll see this really clearly as we get into these larger stitches beginning with this one the half double crochet and you'll really see it well in the double crochet and the triple but they the foundation chain does not count so even though we've been down here once and then come back this is our first row okay so we've reached the end of our first row we're back at our slip knot there's our knot okay so just like at this end we have to have a turning chain so to do that you're going to turn your work then chain two one two because the half double crochet requires two chains to reach to get to that height to get to the height of the stitch then you're going to yarn over 
you're going to skip the chain or the loop on your your hook and your first two chains and you're going to insert your hook into the first stitch which is if you look at the top it's your third chain one two three okay your first stitch in this row insert the hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through oops <laughs> there we go that wasn't pretty but we did it <laughs> so let's try it again yarn over insert the hook into the next stitch in the row yarn over pull up your loop yarn over pull through all three loops on the chain at once you're back to one loop on the chain and you've made your second half double crochet all right let's keep going same thing as before same thing yarn over insert oops. <laughs> yarn over I was about to say see how much easier it is when you don't have to insert into the chain and then I missed the stitch <laughs> yarn over insert the hook into the stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through again yarn over insert the hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through that's it folks that's all half double crochet is so i'm going to finish off this row you keep going and i'll meet you back at the end of the row okay we are at the end of our second row of half double crochet and i want you to just take a look at the stitches see how pretty they are I, that's one of the things that I really like about this stitch is it's just sweet it's simple you can see it it's pretty here it is on the back so you've got your first row here and the second row here and you'll notice as we get further along that these stitches just sit neatly on top of each other and the, this is where they're really this, the rows are really going to be become much easier to see and to count so I'm gonna keep going you keep going too we're gonna uh, start the third row exactly the same way put our hook back in turn your work Oops, almost dropped my yarn. Oh no. So we've turned our work. Now we're going to chain two. One, two. Yarn over. We're not going to do this chain. We're not going to do this chain. It's the third chain, just like we did at the beginning. Insert into the stitch yarn over pull through yarn over pull through okay and again and you just keep going like this until you get to the end of your row now so just keep keep practicing that's what I'm that's the biggest thing right now is you don't worry about it looking pretty it's gonna be cute you're gonna like it you use it you're good it's a washcloth it's a dishcloth you're gonna use it to scrub dishes it's not going to be sent to like the Queen of England as a birthday present or anything <laughs> you know it's a dishcloth so if it's ugly who cares it's gonna scrub your pots and pans <laughs> and you're just gonna keep practicing that's what this is about right now just practice and then later on we'll we'll learn some techniques to make your work even better and that's when you get into the real fun of crochet 
when you are making granny squares and you're going to put them all together to make a big afghan or um, you're making making a real pretty scarf and you're putting some fringe on a scarf or you're doing whatever you're making a hat that's what's fun so just keep practicing and I'm getting out of focus a little bit so I'm gonna scoot back a little bit more just keep practicing and keep adding rows until you get a square so I'm not going to continue to um, show all of this up to my square. I'm just going to keep going. You keep going. Keep practicing. And I'll meet you back when this is a square. Okay. We are finished with the, um, the square part of our dishcloth the main part and if it's not square don't worry too much you're, you're stressing too much if you're worried about that but if you really want to know mine is about eight inches square is it perfectly square heck no do i care heck no i don't um as i said i'm gonna be scrubbing pots and pans with it i don't care now if i was going to give this as a gift or display it then yes I would take a little more time and make sure that the stitches were um, such that they were uniform and that all of the rows were perfectly straight and even and measured exactly whatever whatever inches but I I'm not <laughs> So, it just has to be square. Now, isn't this pretty? Don't you like this stitch? I just, I love this stitch. This is one of my favorite stitches ever. And I, I just, this is the perfect stitch for the texture of this washcloth. Now, I don't want you to think that you can only make washcloths with this, uh, or dishcloths. A couple of people that I have seen on um, YouTube and uh, different blogs that I've seen actually make these a little bit bigger and then put a bar of soap in it and fold it over and stitch it together closed and then that's what they take to the shower. They put a little loop on it and sew that down and then that's what they take to the shower and it's perfect because it gives... It exfoliates your skin a little bit because it's just a little bit rough, but it's soft too. It's really something, um, it's an interesting texture. And I've, I've heard, I haven't seen any of these yet, but I've heard about a new cotton, and I don't even know the manufacturer, but it's for, um, instead of kitchen cotton, it's bathroom cotton. And that sounds weird, but I, I, that's not exactly what I mean but it's like for if you were going to make washcloths for your baby uh, you would want it to be soft yet strong and sturdy to make sure that you get the baby clean so they're making that kind of cotton too I have like I said I haven't seen it it's just something that I've heard about but I would love to try that out so anyway all right we're going to put a little border on this you don't have to put a border on your project but it it looks a little nicer if you do that so I'm going to teach you a quick and easy border that is something you already know how to do and okay so when you get to the end of the row you are going to there are a couple of different ways to do this here's what we're going to do for this project we're just going to, instead of turning it this way and chaining one, we're just going to turn it this way, okay? So you're actually going to start working here. Now the reason that we're going to start working here is this one is going to be the more difficult side. The two sides where you built your rows are going to be more difficult than 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 the top so you want to kind of 
finish with I, I, that's just how I am I want to finish with the easy part I want to go ahead and get the hard part out of the way <laughs> if you wanted to start with the easy part go back and then turn and chain one and do single crochet all the way across but we're going to start the hard way okay and it's really not that hard it's just a, you have to watch okay so we're here on the side and we're going to chain one because this is single crochet and it needs a chain to get from where the to get the hook from where it was to the height that the single crochet is going to be okay so now this is where it gets difficult and this is where it uh, many people do it different ways you're going to do this the way it looks best to you okay there's no right way to do it there's no wrong way to do it if you do it one way this side make sure you do it one the same way on the other side so it looks even okay so what you're gonna do is find a place to put the hook all right so normally when you are stitching in rows like if we were going back this way it's very easy to see where you're going to put the hook right because you've got that little opening it's not so easy here okay so you're going to just look at it decide where the best place to go is and then just do it that way every time now remember one end or one part here is where you started a row the very next one over is where you ended a row so you might have two different places on this side that you're putting it but they will alternate every time okay you'll see what I mean in just a minute okay so I'm gonna decide that I'm going to put my hook I don't want to put it down here that's too far down okay that would be because I would want the border to be even and I would have to come down here well that on the next row well that covers up a whole stitch I don't want to do that so I'm going to find a place right in here near the top and I'm going to insert my hook you might have to work at it a little bit I'm going to make sure that I have two parts of a chain on the hook see that little end uh, uh, that opening right there that means that I have two strands on the hook all right so I've inserted my my hook I'm gonna yarn over pull through yarn over pull through both of them and then I've done a single crochet okay now the next one over I, I may not want to do it right here because that's going to be really close to this one and the idea is you would want to have a single crochet at the end of every row and this is kind of halfway in between this so I don't want to put it there so I'm going to find a good place, maybe here. Work it in, there you go. Make sure you have two single, uh, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through. Now you've done another single crochet. Okay, that looks pretty even to me. In fact, I may need to just stay on this little section of the, the row on every row down. Let's just keep going. This part of it is all play it by ear. Just what looks good is what you're going to do as long as you do it evenly okay so let's keep going um, this looks like a good section right here looks like the similar thing now what's wrong 
I only picked up one loop. I need to go back and make sure that I pick up, insert the hook under both of those loops. And I can't see it, so I'm just going to push it through with, no, nope, that's not where I wanted it to go. Get back, yarn. This yarn is not cooperating with me today. Okay, that's through one. See, sometimes you just kind of have to push it through with your fingers and your nails. And it's not always the easiest thing to do. But there, I got it. Now, let me ask you this. Why do you think I want to make sure that I'm going through at least two of those? Because if I was just going through one, it would weaken this stitch right here. I would want to have both of them go. I would. I need to have it going through both of those so that in case this pulls out a little bit, it won't distort the stitch. So we're going to go to the next one and I'm going to do right here. Looking pretty even, isn't it? I think so. So we're just going to keep going all the way down. You check your work every once in a while. Make sure it looks even. If it doesn't look even, take it out and do it again. Okay, there's no harm in that at all. So here I am telling you one time, don't stress if it's not perfect. And then another time telling you, take it out. What's the deal, Jess? Well, the deal is, this is supposed to be fun. Okay, you want it to be a fun little project. You want to make sure that it looks nice, but you don't want to stress out about it. There, there are way too many things in life to stress out about than a dishcloth. Okay, <laughs> so don't worry about that. Okay, so I'm just going to keep crocheting, single crocheting down all the way to the end of this row or this side. To the end of the first side with my single crochet border and you can see it's not on every, um, every row there there it might be in between a row or so and it's not perfect and that's okay I'm good with that okay so I'm going to chain one turn it this way now this is your original foundation chain and you're gonna do the same thing just find a spot and insert the hook and do a single crochet. So let's do that. It's going to be a little bit harder to find a good spot here on this row, I'm just going to tell you. But just keep plugging away and just find a good spot and do the best you can. This one's kind of difficult, and if you're not careful, you'll end up catching this this little hump. Remember when we worked on the chains, and the backside had a hump? Oh, a little bit. It's okay. Well, there's the hump right there, and you don't want to get that because that will actually weaken the chain and stretch it out and you don't want that to happen so and i'm having a difficult time with this one of course so i'm going to go ahead and finish this this row and do the same thing on this side and then the last row will be easy 
because it, it will be just a regular row of single crochet. So I'll meet you back when we get right here. Okay, I just completed the last row of the border right here on top. And I'm going to cut my yarn, finish it off just like we do the rest of them. And by the way, here's the center pull yarn. See how uh, it was, it's all squishy now. There's probably enough, depending on what kind of stitch you use and how loosely you crochet. There's probably enough in one of those two and a half ounce packages, uh, or um, sorry, balls of yarn to make two pretty good sized uh, dishcloth. It only took me um, maybe a couple of hours to do the whole thing start to finish. So once you get really good and really fast at your crocheting, then you'll be able to make these in no time. And these make wonderful gifts, and poor little bit is just still upset because my son left. These make wonderful gifts, as I mentioned earlier, and especially like for Christmas, this would be wonderful. I could see uh, getting a red, a green, and a white, and alternating the rows. That would be really pretty. And later on, I'll teach you how to change colors in there uh, as you're crocheting. So for just a few dollars, as I said, one ball is um, about a dollar and a half. And a few hours time, you could have some really nice handmade gifts for people that you love. And it doesn't have to be for Christmas. Um, I might even give this one to my mother. Her kitchen is red. So, um, sometime, I'm having a difficult time with this plastic yarn needle with this cotton. Cotton is a little bit contrary sometimes. Um, sometimes have to, to manhandle it a little bit. Now, if I was using a metal needle, um, it would be just fine. But for some reason, this plastic one, I'm just having a difficult time tonight with this. So you just weave it in a few, under a few stitches, just like before. Pull it tight and cut off close to the stitch and then stretch it back out so that it buries itself underneath your stitches. And then you go to the bottom and you do the same thing with your starter tail. Something that you will start to post videos or post pictures of the projects, especially now that they're getting a, to be a little bit more fun and useful. So I would love to see what you're making. And if you have any questions at all, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to help if I can. So then same thing, just pull it tight, stretch it just a little, cut it off close to the stitch, and then straighten your washcloth back out. Here it is, a finished dishcloth folds really nicely and I can see several of these stacked up in tied with a pretty bow that would make a really nice gift that would make me really happy if somebody made these for me thank you so much for watching let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in class number five when we learn double crochet Thanks so much for watching. Fly high, Pooh Bear.